Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a very, very exciting video because today I'm going to be discussing and reviewing the movie and screenplay adaptation of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling. So if you're not involved in the Harry Potter universe or if you've been living under a rock, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a new movie in the Harry Potter universe that was written by J.K. Rowling and just recently came out. And I just went and saw it the other day and I have to say, I really, really enjoyed it. The book that I'm holding right here is the adapted screenplay. So it is just the screenplay version of the movie. It goes scene by scene throughout the entire movie and it is basically exactly the same as the film. But like I said, I just recently saw Fantastic Beasts and right when I got home, I started reading the screenplay. So I have read this now and watched the film and I have so many things I wanna talk about. So the first part of this video will be completely spoiler free. So if you haven't watched the movie yet or if you haven't read the screenplay, then you can stay tuned for that part and once I get into the spoilers, I will give you guys a warning. But starting off right when this movie was announced, I was honestly kind of hesitant and I tried not to get my hopes up at all because after Cursed Child, I didn't really expect much of anything from any of the new Harry Potter that we were getting. However, that one wasn't written by J.K. Rowling, so there were definitely different expectations when it comes to this one. But I just wanted to go in with no expectations so I wouldn't be disappointed because I love the Harry Potter universe. It's my favorite series of all time and the world means so much to me. So I really didn't want to be disappointed by the film. And I'm really glad that I can say that I wasn't disappointed at all. So as for the synopsis of Fantastic Beasts, it takes place in 1926 in New York so we get to see American Wizards and the American Wizarding World and in the backdrop it takes place during the time of Grindelwald's rise to power if you've read the original Harry Potter series you'll know a little bit more about that and we follow our main character Newt Scamander who is actually a British wizard who comes to New York because he's studying magical creatures and he's writing a book called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them which is a textbook that they use in the Harry Potter universe and that's really all I want to say about the synopsis of this so we're basically just following Newt's character as he comes to New York and we also have the whole backdrop of Grindelwald's rise to power and everything that's going on with that. So there are a lot of layers to this and there's a lot going on which I absolutely love because it's very Harry Potter. But like I said I had very few expectations for the film so when I went into the theater I was just trying to not get my hopes up and initially when I walked out I enjoyed the movie but I had quite a few critiques of it and then after a few days of it setting in and then reading the screenplay itself in physical form I realized how much I actually really enjoyed the movie. As you're watching the movie or reading the screenplay, you can definitely tell that this is J.K. Rowling's work, which was so important to me. I think out of everything, that was all I really, really wanted from this. I wanted to be able to watch this or read it and feel like I was reading something that J.K. Rowling had produced, and that is exactly what I felt, and I am so grateful for that. It was definitely still very magical, and it had some of that emotional pull that Harry Potter gives me, so I was really happy about about those aspects of it. I do have a few critiques of it. Overall, I thought that the story, and I can't get too much into it because I'll give away spoilers, but the general story was a little bit unoriginal and it was something I'd seen before. And apart from that, there were parts that were kind of predictable and then there was a romance in here that I really didn't care for and it kind of felt like it was just a little bit forced, but those were just kind of minor things. Overall, it was still really, really fun to watch. And above everything, I was just so happy to be back in the Harry Potter world. I would definitely recommend going and watching the movie, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan or reading the screenplay, because honestly, even though I really liked the film, I think reading the screenplay was actually more enjoyable for me because it felt like reading the Harry Potter books and I like the Harry Potter books more than I like the Harry Potter movies. So this was actually more enjoyable for me than the film was, but either one is a good option. But that's all I can really say for my spoiler free section of this video. If you haven't watched Fantastic Beasts yet or if you haven't read the screenplay, then I would highly recommend clicking away now if you don't want to be spoiled for anything that happens. Go watch it or read the screenplay and come back and discuss with me because I have so many things to say. All right, so now let's get into all of the spoilery goodness. So starting off, I want to start with my critiques of this first because I only have a few of them and I want to know if anyone else agrees with me on any of these. So the first thing is that I thought that the general plot wasn't that original 
because to me, this was almost exactly like X-Men. Now, I'm not talking about the plot with Newt and Jacob and Queenie and Tina. I'm talking about the plot with Dumbledore and Grindelwald, because we only got the very beginning of that in here, but it added so much to what we already had in canon from the rest of the Harry Potter series. So for any of you who haven't seen X-Men and don't know what I'm talking about, X-Men is essentially a sci-fi comic slash movie series that's about the human race, and then there is this mutant gene that develops in some people, and some people start having like supernatural abilities. So some people may have wings, other people may have super strength, you get what I'm saying. So people just start developing supernatural powers, and because of this, the humans start to oppress the mutants, they start to look down on them, and there is a backlash against them, and the whole point of the comics was supposed to be that it was a metaphor for oppression. And while I was watching this movie, I was just making these connections in my head because the plot of this was pretty much exactly the same thing as that. You have these magical youth who are suppressing their magical powers in fear of being persecuted by humans, so then that magical power takes over their body and turns into an obscurus, and then just has a mind of its own and starts becoming destructive. And then you have Grindelwald, who essentially in this case is exactly like Magneto, who is on like the evil side of this, even though he thinks that he's fighting for good because he wants to expose wizarding kind to the humans because he doesn't think that they should live separately. And then you will eventually, even though we didn't get him in this film, will get Dumbledore who will be on the good side of things and he will be trying to stop his old friend Grindelwald. And Dumbledore is essentially like Xavier from X-Men. So like, I don't know if it's just me, if any of you have seen X-Men or read the comics, do you also see those comparisons? Because to me, they were pretty much the same when it came to that general plot. So I wouldn't say that that's necessarily like a really bad thing. I just thought that it was kind of unoriginal and it was definitely something I had seen before because I've seen the X-Men movies many, many times. They're some of my favorite movies. So I know that plot line. So it was really easy to detect in here. Apart from that, my other critique would be that it was kind of predictable for me. Like, I guess that Detective Graves was Grindelwald from literally the first second that he was in the movie because of the very first scene where the Obscurus, or I don't remember what it is exactly, that's just like destroying everything. It's destroying the buildings. And then it like pans out and we see the back of Grindelwald's head and you see his blonde hair and it's like in that haircut with his shaved sides and whatever. And then when we go into the scene, the first scene that Graves is in where they're looking at the destroyed building, it shows the back of his head and he has the exact same haircut except his hair is black and I could just like tell from that connection it was really really obvious to me. Some of my friends who I watched it with said that they didn't get that so that might just be a me thing but there were also other parts that were really predictable to me. Like I knew that Credence was the Obscurus and not his little sister so those plot points were kind of obvious to me and they weren't exactly surprising but again that's not something that took so much away from this that I didn't enjoy it. And then finally the last critique that I have just like the the one part of this that I really didn't like that actually took away from my enjoyment of this was the romance between Tina and Newt. I couldn't get on board. I'm really sorry like if you guys liked them. I know that a lot of people do like them, but I just don't. I don't know what it is. I think it was just too insta-lovey for me and I just didn't see any chemistry there or any connection and I just didn't like it and I didn't like that it was just like kind of being pushed onto us. But I'm really interested in seeing his relationship with Lita Lestrange develop and I've heard that we're gonna get her in the next movie, so I am so excited for that. But yeah, those would be my three main critiques of of this, but aside from that, now I want to get into everything else because I loved so much of this. First of all, the cinematography was great. I loved the 1920s vibe that it had. I thought it was really fitting for the time period. I thought that the movie just like looked magical. Like there were so many moments when I was watching it and they were doing magic or there were magical creatures and I would just sit there and look at it and be like, that's Harry Potter. And I could feel it and it just made me so happy. Even though some of the CGI wasn't the greatest, I loved seeing some of the magical creatures. They were so cute. There was so much more to this world that we don't know about and I'm so excited to discover all of it. And then moving on to some of the characters, I absolutely loved Newt Scamander. I 
love him so much. He's so quirky and awkward and just smart and I'm so excited to see more of him in the other movies. We got a little bit about his background at Hogwarts and the fact that he was kicked out of Hogwarts but he still has his wand and he's allowed to use magic so I'm kind of curious about how that all works out. We also know that he was favored by Dumbledore and I'm also excited to learn more about that. And of course like I mentioned earlier his relationship with Lita. I want to know how that all worked out. I want to know if we're going to get some more of that because honestly I kind of ship that even though she hasn't even been in the movie. His character definitely felt the most Harry Potter like to me and he felt most true to JK Rowling's other characters in my opinion so I was so so happy with him and I loved Eddie Redmayne's portrayal of him. He is just perfect. I am in love with Eddie Redmayne and I wouldn't have cast anyone else. It's just perfect. I also really loved Queenie's character. She took me completely by surprise. I honestly didn't expect to like her at all and then she just like started talking and I was like, you're perfect. I love you. She kind of reminds me of Luna Lovegood mixed with Hermione. I don't really know how to explain that. It's just because she's really smart and she's also kind of like quirky and odd like Luna is. So I love that mix in her and it just makes her so, so interesting. And she's also another character who I think is very true to the original Harry Potter series. Jacob was also super funny and I loved his character. He had so many great one-liners throughout this and I loved getting to see him just discover the magical world world. He was just like in awe of it all and I totally felt that because that's how I would react too if I just discovered that magic was real. Pretty much every scene with Jacob was just so amusing. I love him to death. The scene where they go into the zoo and then he has like the mating scent or whatever on him and then the magical creature, I don't remember what it's called, the one that kind of looks like a rhino or a hippo, like chases him down and then he gets like stuck in the tree and oh my god it was so funny. And then we have Tina's character who honestly she's the one that I don't like in the film and I don't know what it is about her. I think she was just too bland for me and we didn't get enough of her backstory so I just didn't really feel much of a connection to her. And then of course we have the whole plot line of these muggles who are anti-witch and wizard and getting to see Credence's character deal with that and seeing how it all ended and how intense it got was so so great. That part I felt was also very true to Harry Potter. It felt very emotional and it gave me like the same sort of feeling that I get when I'm reading a Harry Potter book. But for the most part most of this film didn't actually have that much of the plot going on. I felt like most of the action actually took place in like the last 15 minutes and that makes sense because this is the first one of five films so it kind of just has to set everything up and just give us a baseline to work up from. So I think that I'm actually going to enjoy the other films a lot more than I enjoyed this one even though I still really liked this. I think that the other ones will add so much more to the world. It's gonna have a lot more dimension and I'm so so excited. I cannot wait. The other thing I realized about this movie and the book is that I think you have to go into it remembering that you're watching adult wizards so it doesn't have the same childhood feeling that Harry Potter tends to have because you're following children around and the story is about a child but in this case we're following adult wizards which is something we've never really done before so it's definitely going to have a different feel to it and I think once I like came to terms with that I really enjoyed it a lot more. Initially when I first saw the film I gave it around like a 3.75 stars out of 5 and after reading the screenplay I think I would give it a solid 4 stars. I really did enjoy it and reading the screenplay definitely did improve my experience. But that just about covers all of my thoughts on Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts on Fantastic Beasts I would love to discuss with you. I am so excited about this film and I definitely have plans to go see it again. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media or talk to me about it anywhere else, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!